and physically, you must be a very, very good talent to stay aboard one of these animals without a saddle for eight seconds. These bucking horses, strength, balance, and agility to ride these bucking horses with a single hand hold. Mark Beauregard aboard Johnny G, a very, very good horse. Mark Beauregard over near that far fence, and he stays aboard for the full eight seconds, and he's hung up, and he finally rolls off and gets away. Oh, my aching hand. <laughs> for sure, but to take away that ache, well, there won't be anything to take it away. He has a few additional aches and pains looking at his score, which is nothing. National Finals horse Johnny G won this matchup, and oh, look at the disgust on that cowboy's face as he hears that bad news story they which means... missed this horse out failed to mark him out first jump out of the chute didn't have those feet up over the points of the shoulders first jump out as the horse touched the ground with his feet first jump well that's too bad that's a good opportunity loss for mark Beauregard tonight as he had a very good horse now we'll see arapaho and up above him there is ronnie christian who is a part-time cowboy he's involved in real estate uh, down in huntsville couple hundred miles south of us here. We're going to back up now. Had a little trouble with one of the horses. We're going to move to Butch Cody as Ronnie gets ready. And this kid kid, the Barrack horse. All right, we'll change the order a little bit due to the problem, and Butch Cody comes rearing out on Misfit Kid, a beautiful, beautiful animal. And Butch Cody stays aboard the full eight seconds. Cowboy here that's been a Oh, had a three-year layoff. That's the first horse he's been on in quite some while, and he made quite a name for himself in the college ranks at Eastern New Mexico. And his score is a 71, JR, and I know you're awfully happy to see that. He's a heck of a guy, isn't he? Yes, sir, Ree. Right here, the black and white paint horse jumping and kicking back to the right. And as the cowboy gets a little on tilt, he never weakens. He keeps that spurring motion all the way back to the rigging. Fine jumping and effort by the jumping and kicking effort by the horse and as he doubles back against the fence butch still there and now <laughs> maybe a little out of shape he says i'm not going to wait for you guys to ride in here i'm getting off and get a breather <laughs> i'll tell you something we saw him before the event tonight and he was probably the most nervous guy in the house because he has not been in this sport as you mentioned jr that's the first time he's competed in this sport but i guess he just got the bug after two or three years sitting on the sidelines and decided hey i gotta get back and give it a try I or to sit sport. there and watch while you see yeah. friends that you went to school with competed with still winning the dollar and possibly the reason we changed shoots here tonight uh neil gay recently in the past month or so is bought out another producer and we have some new horses that haven't been bucked in our arena of course they've been used professional rodeos but they're under the television lights tonight well Ronnie Christian is getting nothing going for him as Arapaho proved to be anything but a bucking horse at all this evening Ronnie Christian could not get this horse to buck until <laughs> until just now and now Arapaho decides well I heard the horn I may have been a little confused but I'm going to show him that I can do something well, Arapaho is still bucking like crazy, and uh, Ronnie Christian probably thinking something to the effect, as you saw him there for a moment, something to the effect, uh, hey, why didn't you do that about eight seconds ago? Butch Kirby, <laughs> we see there, just grinning from ear to ear. Boy, I survived, mighty said, after a three-year layoff, and right now, Ronnie Christian wondering, oh, what's going to happen? He expects this horse to really blow up any minute. And he's beginning to think, well, maybe he's not. He's just going to spin around like this. Nothing's going to happen. So the whistle blows, he double grabs, the pickup man comes in, and just when he starts to get off, we saw earlier, that's when it all explodes and happens. These horses all have a name and mind of their own. <laughs> I don't know where they get their names, but I guarantee you. <laughs> well, we've got a horse making another round. They finally oh, get him it's the bulls we have those problems with. But these new horses, they don't know the way home. This is the first time they've ever been here. Yeah, that's right. So it takes a little longer. Now Monty Elms, his brother Chick, is a very good bareback rider. And Yellow Gold, a very tough horse. We see the flag fly, an indication that he maybe failed to mark that horse out. But staying aboard for the full eight seconds is Monty Elms and uh, looks for that pickup horse. And... Sure enough, Yellow Gold takes off, and off he comes before he could find any help. And what has to be the most painful thing is to look at that scoreboard, which sees no score on it for Monty tonight. Tough luck for this cowboy, and this yellow horse is a tough competitor. As we saw the flag fly, and he missed him out on this side. 
jumps and kicks, goes a different pattern every time, and it's a shame this Cowboy's having a fine effort there wasted tonight. Now we'll watch Johnny Barrett aboard Trashy Tom. Johnny's from Mansfield, Texas. And Trashy Tom. Monty, uh, rather Johnny Barrett, able to stay aboard for the full eight seconds, and he'll look for the pickup horse, and off he comes. Hey, that's a pretty acrobatic move. He got off of there very nicely. The right. score is the a beauty, too. Uh, score is a beauty, too, JR. 75 for Johnny Barrett. A nice ride on Trashy Tom. Trashy Tom jumping and kicking, and this cowboy with a long spurring motion from as far as he can reach. And look at him nick that rig with those spurs all the way back up to his hand. A full spurring lick that the judges like to see. Completely under control and worth 75 points tonight. Next up is Jim Jones, and he is riding a horse called Cowboy. So we have a Cowboy aboard Cowboy. And a fine bareback rider. The score we've seen earlier on him was an 80, and a good horse tonight. And I'm afraid it's all for naught. And once again, the sad story of a wasted effort. A flag flew, JR, as he failed to mark that horse out properly. And so there will be no score on this particular ride for Jim Jones. He's from Odessa, Texas. In the roping and in the bulldogging, we give the livestock a head start. Well, here we say the Cowboys must mark these horses out and give the livestock an advantage the first jump out. And tonight, the livestock is taking that advantage because they're beating these Cowboys. The Cowboys are failing to mark the horses out once again. Bad story. Raymond Gross aboard, done gone. And sure enough, that flag flies again, and this one is going to be for naught as he missed this horse out and well down the arena goes Raymond Gross and done gone and I'm afraid that ride is done gone for Raymond as he will have no score on this particular ride tonight. John That's Patterson sets him on the ground, our cowboy pickup man and the horses getting the best of the cowboys and some real fine spurring efforts by a lot of these bareback riders tonight. It's a shame to waste all that effort and some really fine bucking animals but Rule number one, all the Cowboys know it, and they're just having a little trouble tonight, but who's next? You bet, none other than a guy who recently celebrated birthday number 32, Sandy Kirby. And look at the grimace on his face, this very versatile Cowboy, and a fine performer, National Finals Road. Look at him charge this horse. Boy, he's really going at it. He's really going at it strong. The horse did not exactly buck, as I think he would have liked. And now that horse with a mind of its own, Easy, the name of the horse. And uh, easier getting on than getting <laughs> off, I think. <laughs> when you say hey, the score is 72, that's a good score for Sandy Kirby. But he did not get much help from Easy, so it was a hard score for him to acquire. Right here, Easy comes out strong, takes a run at him. There's where Easy probably cost him some points, but now look at the jumping and kicking action of Easy. Little frog kind of weak there. There at the last, a little crow hopping, <laughs> but had some real strong jumps right in the middle if he could keep it up. Here's Jack Ward, uh, many time national finals rodeo qualifier aboard Miss Kitty. Jack Ward going for the full eight if he can get there, and he does. Jack Ward, he had his back so far back, it looked like I could swear his head almost hit the rear end of that horse. Cowboys really open themselves up to the power of these bareback horses, and the more they can do that, stay under control, and really have a wild spurring motion, the more the judges appreciate it. And for Cadillac, a score of 70, former world champion in this event. Cadillac Jack has no trouble with that spurring motion. Look at those toes turned out in opposite directions. A lot of style here, leaning way back. Magnificent control, a long spurring motion all the way back up to the rigging. And this is the style that the Cowboys like to show the judges because they know the judges' pencil will work a little better in their favor. But unfortunately, it worked to the effect that Jack Ward misses just out of the money today. Johnny Barrett with a 75 is the winner in the bareback riding competition, followed by Sandy Kirby with a 72 and Butch Cody with a 71. Butch returning after a three-year absence from the sport. So that's the bareback riding competition here from Mesquite. Stay with us. We'll be back. Here's news for good cooks who want to become even better cooks. You can improve your abilities the way great chefs do. By mastering new skills one kind of food at a time. Meats, salads, 
sauces, desserts. It works for the great chefs, and now Time Life Books makes it work for you. The Good Cook. It's more than a collection of recipes. It teaches specific skills, step by step by step, in brilliant close-up, full-color photographs. Fish, salads, poultry, classic desserts, and more. One kind of food to a volume. And to show off your new skills, it gives you thousands of delicious recipes. Try the introductory volume, Vegetables, for 10 days. See how clearly it helps you make ordinary vegetables special. Learn the tricks of cooking artichokes. Create tempting dishes like ratatouille. You know, they make it so easy to try new things. You'll find recipes from the world's gourmets and renowned cooks. Classic dishes and regional specialties. Tonight, Richard Olney Zucchini Pudding Souffle. With vegetables, you get a useful 48-page guide full of tips on kitchen equipment. Keep vegetables and pay only $11.95 plus shipping and handling, and the kitchen guide is yours. Other volumes come one about every other month at the same price, always for a 10-day examination. Keep the books you want. Cancel any time. Or return vegetables in the kitchen guide with no further obligation. Call now, toll-free, to see the first book for yourself. The Good Cook from Time Life Books. See how much it can do for your cooking. Here's how to order. To order, phone toll-free, 1-800-228-5005, or write Good Cook, 815 Time and Life Building, Chicago. We'll send qualified buyers a volume for 10 days with no obligation to buy. So act now. Phone toll-free, 1-800-228-5005. That's 1-800-228-5005. I'm Sharon Smith in the ESPN Newsroom. We won't know for a couple of weeks exactly which school voted how, but the members of the College Football Association voted this afternoon in Atlanta to accept their own contract for television coverage of college football. This contract negotiated independently of the NCAA. The NCAA has threatened action against any schools that actually take part in this. Uh, suspension and possibly even expulsion, so it's an extremely controversial issue. Here's the breakdown of the vote. 33 yes, 20 no, 5 abstentions, 3 not present. And although the 13 school margin seems to be substantial, it's certainly not known at this point whether that will be enough to survive all the reconsiderations which will yes, follow at this much. point. Reconsiderations by both the schools and by NBC, which was the uh, network which established that contract with the CFA. So. The whole controversy has really just started in spite of today's vote. Now, on today, to today's Major League schedule, uh, three games going on this afternoon, two completed, one underway. In the American League, Chicago at Toronto, Lloyd Mosby came up with a solo home run in the bottom of the ninth inning to lead the Toronto Blue Jays to a 5-4 to four win over the Chicago White Sox. Dave Steve, the winner, he is 6-8. and eight. Ed Farmer, the loser, in relief, he drops to 2-3. and three. Now, on to the National League, where San Francisco Giants held on for a 4-3 to three win over the Chicago Chicago Cubs in that game. Now there's one other game underway. It's the first game of a twinite doubleheader and that one. Uh, Pittsburgh leading San Diego three to nothing in the third inning. Those three runs the result of a home run by Dave Parker around whom trade rumors have been swirling. Um, officials of the organization have said that Dave Parker might be the next to go in this disappointing season for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'll be back with more news in just a minute. The sports far and wide on ESPN Friday. Carlos Rodeman tries to add to his point lead when he heads the field of Formula One races in the South African Grand Prix. Then it's north to Canada and some dynamic professional football as quarterback Ken Johnson directs the Calgary Stampeders against the Ottawa Rough Riders live. Sports Center ties the sporting world together with a late edition of the most comprehensive sports news program on television. It's an unforgettable Friday here on your Total Sports Network. Andrea Yeager and Martina Navratilova, quarterfinal winners today in the Canadian Open. That's the Players' Challenge Women's Tournament going on in Toronto. By the way, you'll see the semifinals and finals of that tournament here on ESPN Live Saturday and Sunday. One o'clock Eastern time on each day the activities will begin, so you want to watch that. In the meantime, though, you're going to want to watch more professional rodeo action. I'm Sharon Smith. Let's return now to Mesquite, Texas.
is kind of a tradition around here. We've shown this from time to time. This is called the Cap Scramble, folks, and it gives all the kids a chance to get involved in rodeo, and it's a lot of fun. We have a good cast of characters running out here tonight, JR, to get this one underway. Gives mom and dad a chance to kind of stand up and relax and take a breather, too. <laughs> I think there are many moms and dads in the audience who can appreciate that. Well, we'll and be we have them all shapes and sizes, eight years and younger. <laughs> Some enthusiastic, enthusiastic and some not so. <laughs> and down at the other end, there is the target. There is a little bow pinned on the back of that calf who is looking for a place to hide. And sure enough, everybody's after it. There you can see that little bow right there. Did somebody get it? I don't know. They're still running as if uh, he got away. Oop. Somebody had the tail from him. Oh, there he goes. He had that young... That well, if I've got the sail, certainly I can get the ribbon. And <laughs> Simple enough. It would appear easy enough anyway. What do you think that calf is thinking when he's saying? <laughs> that young guy. Looks like he ran out of gas, didn't he? I hope he didn't get run over. Run over by the thundering herd, I think. <laughs> and cowboy clown Bob Romer was also run over by the thundering herd. Yeah, that's right. I saw him with his hand on his forehead there looking for a way to get out. All right, well, two of the world's best rodeo stars, Monty Henson and Bob Brown, have brought a new dimension to the excitement of bronc riding with their patented flying disc mount. We've shown that several times. Earlier, I had a chance to talk with Bob Brown. Well, from time to time, you've heard us commenting about the flying disc mod and what an interesting part and a very flashy part of the sport of rodeo this has become. And we have a gentleman here who is probably uh, one of the best known for it. Monty Henson watched him and picked up the technique very well. And Bob Brown alongside with us. And Bob, first of all, where did you develop the technique? Did you originate it or, or have you been watching it too? No, this this is something that's been going on throughout the years of rodeo, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And it's it's nothing new, but it's... I guess new to this era. I was one of the first guys that started doing it in the last all oh, ten years, I guess. And then there's some more guys started after I did, like Monty. He does it just as good as I do. You know, it's just a little bit different. You mentioned a couple of items that I had not thought about the uh, flying dismount, but there are actually some purposes for it and some things which it accomplishes. Yeah, it, there was a purpose for it when I learned because just my dad and myself, and we were short-handed, and a lot of times a wild horse would try to run over the fence or something. You'd have to get off that away. That's where I learned. And nowadays I like it because the crowd likes it and it's good for enthusiasm in the crowd and it's good for the stock. It's good for the judges sometimes. A lot of judges, yeah. they'll see that and just that last minute thought of the ride, you know, a lot of time it'll be worth a point or two to you and that sometimes will make a lot of difference. You mentioned the stock. That's one element that I never thought of. A horse, you know, after they've been in the business for 10, 15 years, they're going to either go on with it or they're going to get weaker one of the two you know nothing stays the same and a lot of horses that are having a tendency to maybe weaken right at the end you know towards eight second whistle a lot of time when somebody does that well they think they've accomplished something they think they've thrown somebody off and a lot of times it'll keep horses stronger and it'll keep them bucking better plumb up to the eight second whistle there's a very highly regarded cowboy right there bob brown one of the best in the business we're going to be back here at mesquite Stay with us now as JR and I will be returning to describe the saddle bronc competition for you. Don't run away. To travel soon, please listen carefully to this special TV offer announcing new parachute luggage. Yes, parachute luggage. Light as a cloud, strong as steel. Four designer pieces are crafted of the same type ripstop material used in Air Force parachutes. Won't tear, won't stretch, and you won't believe how much it holds. This stewardess is packing for a week of travel. On the left is the old-fashioned hard luggage. Weighs over 20 pounds empty. On the right, parachute luggage. Weight, 25 ounces. Now watch this. Clothes, shoes, cosmetics, books. It all packs in the old-fashioned case. She'd like to take the coat, but it just won't fit. Now, let's pack it all in parachute luggage. You won't believe your eyes. It just puffs up to hold more and more and more. Tight, neat, light. What a pleasure. And look, there's still room enough for the coat. Imagine, all this in one beautiful bag, tough as steel but light as a cloud. Strong, comfortable shoulder straps and hand grips are smooth and secure as a seatbelt. Try to fit the old set in your car. Just won't budge. Parachute luggage fits snugly, neatly, actually molds itself to the shape of the compartment. Now here's exactly what you get. First, the big roomy duffel bag. Plus, we send you the wardrobe bag. Folds for easy carrying, hangs up for wrinkle-free storage. In addition, you get the weekend bag, and finally, we send you this handsome featherlight utility bag. Complete four-piece designer set with eight rugged zip pockets for the neat packer. 
Famous department stores offer similar luggage for as much as $75. Now, use your credit card. Order TV parachute luggage for just $39.95 with a money-back guarantee. Yes, parachute luggage. Rush delivery if you act now. Here's how to order. For rush delivery, use your Visa or Master Charge and call toll-free. 1-800-228-5678. If lines are busy, please keep calling. Use your credit card and call 1-800-228-5678. Or send just $39.95 to parachute luggage. Box 500, Department A, Little Falls, New Jersey, 07424. But for faster service, use your credit card and call toll-free 1-800-228-5678. And now it's time for the Saddle Bronc competition. And I notice that a uh, good friend of yours and mine is going to be doing the judging here tonight, J.R., very familiar cowboy, none other than Bob Brown. Well-known Saddle Bronc rider that earlier this week was doing his famous flying dismount and the horse ducked and dodged out from under him and found Bobby landing on his head, in fact, getting knocked unconscious. And doctor told him he better not ride for a few days, so he is judging the saddle bronc riding here. And we, we've already missed one so-called saddle bronc ride. It's Jim Gay got bucked off the pickup horse. <laughs> Here's Bill Fry. He wants to stay aboard Buck, who's had some pretty good performances here going along the near fence and well down the arena, Buckmaster. Hey, there's a little bit of a flying dismount, huh, by Bill Fry, who is from Eunice, Louisiana, and the score is a 65 on that particular ride. Let's see why here, JR. Cowboy walking down the arena, going through the cowboy ritual. <laughs> yeah, unbuckling the shafts. Buckmaster jumping and kicking over under our booth here, coming around to the right, and the cowboy, the spurring motion. Toes turned in just a little bit on the right side, and that's why we have a judge on each side so they can see what they're doing on both sides. And his flying dismount, Bob isn't going to be able to do that tonight, so I'll demonstrate to those in the audience. Yeah, and you see uh, Mr. Jones is the horse, and you can see that he's pretty anxious to get going, a little bouncing up and down in that chute. You get a very good look at Mr. Jones right through the railings of that uh, shoot and just coming in over the top there is Lynn Brown the Cowboys from Euless Texas and he will be shooting at that 65. Cowboy reaching down right now placing his feet in the stirrups they like to do that themselves rather than somebody reach in and do it and out comes Lynn Brown aboard Mr. Jones and the flag flies almost immediately I think he failed to mark that horse out which will nullify his score in this particular event tonight. Number one rule, just as in the bareback riding, they have to give the horses the advantage first jump out of the chute. And Lynn Brown tonight heard that news from the rodeo announcer here. Not too happy about that. So no score for Lynn Brown here tonight. And we can't see the right foot, possibly that was the offending foot, and we couldn't tell how far the left foot was, but no real spurring effort for this cowboy either. Tommy Bryant riding Wrangler now, goes over near that far fence, and he's in trouble over there. Stays aboard that animal, goes the full eight seconds, not much of a bucking motion it seemed. But you know, that can be deceiving too, JR, because of the, the opinion of the judges. He's, the, the Cowboy has done what he can do. They may give him a high score anyway. And in this case, however, there's no deception. It was a 61. Try to judge that bucking motion. We're, we're sitting up here, things are awful calm where we're, we're sitting. Yeah. But if you look right there, jumping and kicking that particular horse and the Cowboy under control, seat staying well in that saddle, spurring fore and aft. And the whistle blows as Cowboy pickup men right in to set them safely on the ground. All right, next up will be Rocky Ogletree, who is a part-time cowboy. He's from Mesquite, and he is at the Deputy Sheriff's capacity in Mesquite. And uh, Whiskey River is the horse that he is riding tonight. Rocky Ogletree, whoa, he almost went over the dashboard, didn't he? He had to hang on there at the end. And there's a flying dismount by Rocky Ogletree, but he failed to mark out the horse, so it's all for naught. All for entertainment. Everybody's having a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> and we'll watch the smooth ride if we watch from the back angle, the side angle. Watch the separation of space between the cowboy and the seat of that saddle. And in those thighs as he's sliding back and forth, 
it's going to have to be a little sore right there, <laughs> both in the front and in the back tomorrow after the beating he was taking. Oh, man. I wonder if the Cowboys are trying to get a few extra points with Bob Brown judging, knowing how he likes that flying this <laughs> All right. Well, here's uh, Buzz Cooper now riding Teddy Bear. This is supposed to be a very good horse, but the flag flies, and this ride is going to be for naught. As Buzz Cooper missing his horse out, and, oh, he went right over the front or off to the side there, didn't he? Somewhat a different version of the flying dismount. <laughs> uh, yeah. Compliments of Teddy Bear, <laughs> national finals horse. Yeah, that's an unusual twist of the flying dismount, all right. At first, Teddy Bear, a little erratic. And as he comes around, now he's starting to jump and kick, get with the program, comes back around to the left. Good jump and kick effort there at the last. Good enough to put Buzz Cooper in the dirt after the whistle. Next up will be Tim Metter. He's from Denton, and the horse he'll be riding is Sky Poke tonight. And it ran a little bit on him, now cuts back toward the right. Back toward the chutes and around in a circle goes Sky Pope. Is this a relatively new addition to the stable here, to the uh, stock here, or is this horse? Yes, it is. A good many of these horses in the saddle bunk riding tonight. Of course, Teddy Bear was not a new horse, but Sky Pope is a new horse. And 61 is the score for Tim Metter here tonight, which ties him for second place right now. Sky Pope turns out. Cowboy waiting for him to establish a bucking rhythm. Cowboy spurring motion there, really just polishing his boots. Toes are not turned out, just a slight movement of about a foot when you could have a full arc from up in the neck to the cantle of the saddle, and the judges will judge it accordingly. And so 61 is the score, but a well-polished set of boots, at least the inside part, right? Ah, uh, yeah. For Tim Metter. Here's Trez Moore now. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of big Cowboy fans out in the Phoenix Tempe area. This is Rawhide who is the horse that Trish Moore will be riding here tonight. In the saddle bronc riding, as we saw earlier, Rocky Ogletree moving back and forth as well as up and down in that saddle. If it wasn't for the shafts and legs these cowboys are riding. Uh, would be a lot of rawhide in the arena tonight, <laughs> quite probably. Boy, that is for sure. But you see that saddle right there has no saddle horn on it like a lot of the saddles that people are familiar with. Uh, the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association has some very strict rules that apply to the exact specifications these saddles are made to. So that all the Cowboys have an equal opportunity as far as the saddle is concerned. And no saddle horn out front. We see some of these Cowboys take a beating up over the, that dashboard, as it's called. And a saddle, saddle horn could certainly do you some damage if it was to contend with as well as the bucking horn. Very interesting. I was not aware of that. But you pointed that out. That a ring be a disadvantage. They're not going to honk at anybody either while they're doing this. Here's Tress Moore, and this horse runs just a little bit, trying to find that fucking motion if he can. Tress Moore aboard. Rawhide, the horse. Tress Moore, and gosh, he missed. Four Cowboys that have failed to miss out their horses or failed to mark out their horses. Number one rule. Cowboy missed him out on the right side, and he's pedaling there. And left and right motion, and the spring motion, not the same motion on each side. And right now, it's all for naught. Goes down on the ground with the judge's flag. And here is one of the more recognized cowboys in America, at least if you count the number of times that his pictures. Daryl Jones, the guard, the guard, uh, Bunny Rabbit, and this horse bear. Any rabbit with a tremendous bucking road, Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones noticed for his appearance in a red cap up and down the countryside from Bill Billboard and giving that chewing gum a fit. And right here we see Bunny Rabbit give him somewhat of a fit. And Bunny Rabbit goes to the left, Daryl parts off to the right and looks up wondering what happened. Boy, that was a good what happened. And off came Daryl Jones. No ride for him. Andy Kirby competing in his second event tonight. He's competed successfully in events in the PRCA. He's from Greenville, India, Killer tonight. His second event, 5-8-1. Kirby, very, very capable cowboy. Actually, now makes his home in Greenville, Texas. About ready to 
go. Indian killer, here's a good place stone many, many times, and Sandy has many, many places in riding. And in the bull riding here, I don't have any wins. In the he's charging tonight. He's got a good horse, and this may be Sandy's night. Boy, he is charging. Look at him work against that horse.